Hello again, Saints. I want to thank everyone for joining us for another Romans chapter 12 survey. And here in Romans chapter 12, we are looking at lesson number seven. We're looking at lesson number seven where we're going to see about letting love be. Letting the selfless love of God work effectually within you. And today again, we're looking at Romans chapter 11. Romans chapter 12. We're not looking at chapter 11 anymore. This is Romans 12 survey, and we're looking at lesson seven. And here in lesson seven, we are looking at the operating upon the selfless love of God. And this is going to be part one because there's going to be many aspects to looking at the selfless love of God and the whole issue that God's love is selfless. That's the type of love that when we see the word love, and Paul doesn't use selfless, but you ought to know when Paul brings up, and well, not just Paul, but all throughout scripture, when it talks about the, the mercy of God, it talks about selflessness. It talks about God bringing forth mercy. And we, we know that. We call it unmerited. unmerited. When we look at the word grace, we, t we look at that. It, it, it's, it's love given to others, and sometimes we'll say that that don't deserve it, sinners. But that's also true in our sanctification, just as well as it's true with our heavenly vocation. But we, we are taught how to love as God, as Christ. And just like we see in the verses, we're going to look at them, as God hath dealt to every member the measure of faith. As God, and it, that we be not high-minded. Our thinking, that we're, we're supposed to think, every man among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. Notice, God hath dealt, and we too are taught, we ought to, we ought to uh, deal out selfless love to others on the behalf of others. And so what we're going to be looking at, we're looking at the whole issue about the selfless love of God, the selfless love of God and the idea that let love be. And we're going to see that let love be. It's going to say without dissimulation. Don't love. Love wants to simulate the love working within a man ought to want to simulate the selfless love of God and the selfless love of Christ. And when it does simulate their selflessness, you're going to see it's going to bring forth all those things. We being a, a, a living sacrifice, we operating upon the renewed spiritual mind, the mind of Christ. That's the word of God mind. That's the mind that the Lord and Savior operated upon. Bring it. We can bring forth fruit unto holiness. We can be glorified together. It, suffering with him, you, 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 you'll, you'll. When I say I hate these words, desire to serve, to, 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 you'll desire to bring forth glory and honor unto him, to be glorified together, and and yea, all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution, and when you do, you're gonna use his word when you suffer. You, you're gonna, you're gonna know God as the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulation. You're going to know him as the God of peace. And the God of peace, as we see over in Romans chapter 16, and the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. And that's because that's that, that strong that is in the faith, ones that are wise unto that which is good and simple concerning evil. They're, they are the wise, as Paul says over in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. I speak as unto wise men, Judge, judge ye what I say. They're going to be operating upon the renewed spiritual mind. They're not going to be as the carnal babe. They're going to be glorified together. And when we bring forth truth and bring forth the spiritual mind, the carnal mind, the carnal mind is offended, offended by the renewed spiritual minded saint. He becomes offended based upon his flesh doesn't like when you say certain things about that. 
you know, about the, I was talking with a brother today, we we're talking about the, about peace and comfort as, as others would, when, when people come and they, when, when a loved one passes away or if a loved one's sick, you always have the one who's the carnal mind, whether they're in God's word of truth or not, they feel they're, they're always the one that want to jump up and say, well, you know, God called them home or, or maybe it was just their time or, or you, you know, uh, uh, God had a plan. And that that's just the peace as this world giveth it, not as the peace that God God's word talks about. We ought to know the good of the real, the true good of God, and we're to cleave unto that which is good, abhor that which is evil. But this world's thinking, their good, their love, their life, their evil, their tradition, goes contrary to the selfless love of God. They think it's according to God's selflessness. They think that their their thinking is according to God. God, a, a Christ, to come back and say, "Oh, look what you guys are doing." There, there's a church on every corner. Isn't that good? Oh, you guys are 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 uh, becoming one. There, there's no hate amongst each other. You, you guys are so receptive to to all type of things. There's different communities: LBGTQ, XY, whatever community. You, you guys are loving everyone now. It doesn't matter what they, how they feel or what they believe. And, and, and that's the thing. I'm not, folks, we're not supposed to hate the people. It's the doctrine. It's the thinking. Man's, this world's good is evil in the sight of God. This world's love is evil in the sight of God. This world's life is evil in the sight of God. This world's evil is even... <laughs> Because this world's evil, what they're, and, and I hate to do a whole, because I, I've, I've done that, if you've seen my, if you've seen the videos I've done, the survey called The Attributes of the Man and Woman After Satan, Ooh, I talk about that. I talk about what man thinks is the evil today. And man, what he views as the evil, God's not even concerned with that. And, and, and things like Satan worship. And I'm talking about according with the church. They'll look at, oh, that person, Satan worship. Uh, just, just the old obvious things that God's not even concerned with. It's just the tradition of men. Again, but those things, folks, are all evil in the sight of God. You want to know the good, what's the good of God? It's contained in his word. And we're going to see all these Bible verses, and they're going to they're tell you that. It'll even tell you. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. Do you know that's the evil today? Bless them which persecute you and curse not. People would say, your God don't like ugly. And they'll even, if someone some does something to someone else and they feel that God's going to get, God's going to recompense onto them. And they, and they can't wait till it, wait till it happens. And, and they, they don't feel if a person persecutes them, oh, block them. I'm not going to allow you. I can't love myself. Love someone unless I learn to love myself. I just have to, have to get those people out of your lives. They'll go to, to, to psychiatrists with tell them the same exact thing. But if you if you tell them, no, 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 bless them that persecute you. Recompense to no man evil for evil, but provide things honest in the sight of all men. If you say that, to, they're going to, are you crazy? <laughs> provide things honest. If someone recompensed evil to me, I'm going to provide things honest. That's foolish. Well, of course, it's foolish in the sight of men. This world's tradition, this world's ways, and this world's life would look upon that good of God as evil. That's the way they'll view it. But let's get into the study um, and, and come over to Romans 12. Look at Romans 12. Look at verse 9. Romans 12, verse 9. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. You know, this is a this is not a long verse, but it is a powerful verse. Because what Paul is making mention to them who were he's exhorting to be. Um, 
a living sacrifice, he's now tell and, and and ones who he's told them, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's not renewing of your mind unto whatever you want or this world's things, but renew your mind according to the word of God and the will of God. And you know how you know it? Because he's going to say renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So knowing what is the good, acceptable will of God, you'll be able to now cleave onto what is good, is what is the good of God. When you're proving what is the good and acceptable. So now, once you renew your mind with God's word of truth, you'll be able to see the peace of God. Peace, not as this world giveth, but as the word of God gives it. Taking sufferings out of your life, folks, is not the peace of God. And what I mean by that is, sufferings are going to be there. Sufferings are going to come up. And God's word is designed to renew your mind of thinking about those sufferings. It's not to change your sufferings and it's not designed. God never promised to change your sufferings. He's not promised to give you peace just as far as you praying for it and boom, it's there. It's his word gives you the peace. That's how it's when it says over Romans 16 and the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. That's because of the wise, the saint that is oper the saint that is, as he says, I would have you to be wise unto that which is good and simple concerning evil. Because if you're wise unto that which is good, you're gonna know God's good. You're not gonna think that God's um, uh, testing you or recompensing to you something and then as a test and then now in his time, he's going to take it away. But going back to verse nine here, let love be without dissimulation. As I said, love desires to simulate God's love. And when I say that love desires, love itself, God's love desires to, to, to have simulation. God's love desires that other men follow his love and that it be replicated, that that man will walk in the identity of God's love. And this love, what's being shown here, what's being shown here is that when it says, let love be without dissimulation, let God's love be without dissimulation. In other words, simulate the selfless love of God, abhor that which is evil. We ought to have a, a hatred, a godly hatred for the things of this world. We ought to know that the conformity to this world is evil. And you, you've seen that and you're going to see that in Romans 13 about the works of darkness. But man passes off darkness for light today. As I may mention, all those things, man's thinking, man thinks that it's good. If a man, if a man is, um, if you see two people saying, oh, we want to adopt a child. Well, sure, we're, we're two, two loving parents. What difference does it make if we're both women or both men? And people look upon that as a good. You got people wanting to take kids from foster care, you know, but again, folks, it, it's it's that's today's good. And, and but when it says cleave to that which is good, and you ought to cleave to God's good. God's good. Man looks upon God's good as foolishness today. You being counted as a fool for Christ's sake is looked upon as the evil today. But that's God's good. And when you are to bore that which is evil. The thinking, as I said before, when people was would say, what do you mean if somebody gives me evil, I'm supposed to provide things honest in their sight? Well, people that think like that, those are the ones who have to abhor, they ought to abhor that evil thinking. And we're to look upon 
the things of this remember all that is in the world the lust of the eyes lust of the flesh the pride of life is not of the father but is of this world you know you don't bore with with godly abhorrence those things and we'll, i'm gonna get back to that be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love in honor preferring one another now when people see that they'll say why did paul have to just say this how come paul just just didn't say loves just love your love one another why did he have to say these words these five aspects of selfless love is what's being shown there and someone say well that's charity these are five aspects these are these go far beyond just charity and I understand these all are forms of charity, each one. But guess what? This is five specific things that Paul makes mention. And there's a reason why, because all the things that are going to follow are going to be all those aspects of selfless love, kindly, affectionate. That's, as I said, one to another. With brotherly love in honor preferring one another you got the kindly affectionate one to a, kindly and affectionate one to another with brotherly love in honor preferring one another that's five aspects kindly is one affectionate is one brotherly love is one in honor is another and preferring one another do you know that if, if someone persecutes you when it says bless and, per and, and, pl and curse not, do you know you're preferring them over yourself? Do you know you're being kindly affectionate? Do you know you're, that's, if you're recompensing to no man evil for evil, but you're providing things honest, honest in their sight, you're giving them something, but you're not giving them evil. You're not giving them back what they gave you. You, But look at uh, verse 11 now not slothful in business, fervent in, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. When this says not slothful in business, this is not saying that you ought to be not just slothful, you, you ought not be slothful at work. This is not saying that as your daily walk, you're not, you're supposed to have pep in your step. You're supposed to be mo a motivated person, you know, that's not what this is saying. This is saying not slothful in God's business. That's what this is talking about here. This is talking about, we have to think, folks, we have to think about the will of God is being spoken here. This is not your will. This is not your, your things. This is not your things. And I've heard preachers say this. Every single thing you're talking about is how Christ will walk. Every single aspect of this if someone recompensed to christ evil for evil he would provide things honest if someone was to curse him he would bless them that cursed him and in this here being kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love and honor preferring one another not slothful in business whose business do you think you're being taught to not be to to not to be a hard worker in Whose business do you think you're taught to, to labor uh, labor abundantly in? That's your father's business. Fervent in spirit. And what do you think? Who? What do you ought to have in your spirit? The will of God or the will of this world or your own will? What you? If you don't know, look at the rest of the verse. Serving the Lord. Not serving your own business. Not not serving. I'm not saying that you you ought not walk godly amongst the world. I, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying what this is going after. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. See, because if you were, if you were working in your father's business and serving the Lord, feed fervent in your inner man, you're going to be able to do these things. You're going to be able to rejoice in hope. You're going to be patient. When tribulation comes, you're going to, you're going to be rejoicing and you're going to be patient in that. 
continuing instant in prayer. Paul knows if you're doing these things here, verses nine through eleven, you're going to need. You're gonna you're gonna be trip. You're gonna go through tribulation. That's what this is saying. You, you're gonna be. Why is the, why do you think tribulation is being brought up here? Why do you think instant instant in prayer? You're gonna need prayer. I don't mean need prayer. It's called a prayer line. That's not what I'm saying. Instant in prayer. When things of this life seem to get at you or whatever, you you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna turn turn to speaking unto the Lord, letting the Lord know how His Word is working effectually within you. And and to, because who you're not gonna call and go talk to someone else who have who have words without understanding. Look at verse 13, distributing to the necessity of saints given to hospitality. Distributing to, to the necessity of saints. Now, the necessity of saints. Hmm. Now, what, what, you know what? I'll get to that in a second. But what this is saying here is that selfless love. And that's necessity. That, that That's not if you, you know, you got people, you got to. Loved one that says, hey, you know, we're about to go on a cruise and, you know, it's just, it, can you guys throw in, can you guys, I'll pay you back and <sighs> distributing to, to the necessity of saints. That's all part of that. What you've seen over there about the, about the, uh, uh, or he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity and all that, the verse over, uh, verse eight and all that. That's what that's that's what that was going after, because it's going after how we ought to give unto others, give up of ourselves for the sake of others. And if you're gonna, if you're understanding the what what is the good and acceptable will of God, you're gonna know what the necessity of saints are. You're gonna know what is the good, what is to their good. What is to their good would be um, distributing. Things that are that are, as Paul made mention of in Philippians chapter four, food and raiment, things like that, and not only, but to their edifying, to their good, edifying of a, of a, of itself in love. Because as, as you've seen, you've seen there when Paul makes mention about that, not slothful in business, ferv, uh, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. If if you are operating upon the selfless love of God and the selfless love of Christ, that's going to go contrary to this world's thinking. They're going to think you're evil. They're going to think that you're you're the evil, and you're not going against their. You're going against their good. You're going against what they love. Your thinking is not according to theirs. Your life. Is 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 evil in their sight, but that's where why when it, why it says patient in tribulation, and that's why it says bless them which persecute you, bless and curse not, because God knows you're, and we'll get to that in a second. But God knows that persecution and tribulation is going to come by them who are a living sacrifice. Them who are operating upon the renewed spiritual mind, they are also going to, going to, um, they're going to they're fall, fall into that. And, and, and many people, they're going to be those that are going to come. And they are going to come when, when you are, when you are shining as, as his lights, when you are shining as his lights, because you let love be without dissimulation. Remember what the Lord told those apostles, what was going to come their way when they would allow the comforter to, to guide them. When they would walk in, in, in the word of God, that the, the people are going to come their way. But if we stand back and we don't and, and, and we stand back and we're not we're um, we don't allow the world doesn't know us, whether we're at work, whether it's neighbors, whether it's whatever. I'm not saying you, you're to walk through. Meyer, Kroger, or something like that, and with the sign up. I'm, I'm that, that's not what I'm saying. But they ought to know you're operating upon God's selfless love. 
They ought to know you're able to prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God if you're bringing forth fruit unto holiness. If you're operating upon God's selfless love, you're going to walk as as at, at with the spiritual mind. And what I mean, I don't mean that you're you to do like the monk does and the 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 the, the um even the Mormon as they ride the bikes around and, and all that. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that selfless love of God, what it does, when it sees this world's thinking good love, life, and evil in its tradition, you, you, you abhor, you abhor that. I'm not saying you abhor the people, but abhorring that is you speaking God's good. You proving what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. But you know how you're going to do that? Because others are going to see it. And when they do see it, as it says, bless them which persecute you. Why are they going to persecute you? And, and if, you, if you have enough power, if you're operating upon enough power to bless them, believe me, folks, they're going to curse you. I'm going to say that again. If you're operating upon the true will of God and with his selfless love, if you're operating upon that, they are going to curse you. Because if you are, I mean, they're, they're going to persecute you if you're able to bless. You're going to have enough spiritual maturity to, to, to in other words, they've heard from you the mind of Christ. They've heard from you the renewed mind. They can see the conformity of his son working within you, working about you. It puts you on the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. And when you walk and talk in that, you're going to be, you're going to, as patient in tribulation, you're going to, you're going to be able to, that patience, not, not only you reading his word, when you pray unto the Father about and rejoice, when you're rejoicing, you're glorified together. You're suffering with him because you're suffering, but you're using his word. You're using his words and allowing it to work affection within you. I mean, folks, this might sound like foolishness to some, but if I say to someone, anyone in the world, and when I say anyone, I mean anyone of this world's thinking. If I say to them, you got problems in tribulation, well, go see a psychiatrist. Now, guess what? They can understand that. They can understand another man's words that he learned from another man who learned from another man who wrote a book to tell you how to deal with psych, whether it's psychology, whether it's sociology, whatever the issue is. And even if a person says, I'm not going to go see no shrink, I, I don't believe in that. But he does know that those words help some with their tribulation and it could help him. But he feels he doesn't need to go see one. But he knows that that's today's good in dealing with your tribulation and suffering. That's not foolishness onto him. But if I say be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And that about knowing God as the God of all comfort who comfort us in all our tribulation. And then saying things like, abhor that which is evil and cleave to that which is good. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. What? People can't fathom that. That's evil to people. That's their evil. But folks, God desires that we simulate his love. If we letting love be without dissimulation, let love be without simulating God's love, Christ's love. But let's move on. Come over to uh, look at Romans 8 now. Romans 8, look at verse 26. Romans 8, verse 26. And this is where, folks, we, we were taught selfless love. Back, uh, you see it over there all throughout the book of Romans, but you were specifically taught that as, an, as a son that desires to cry up a father, to be adopted, his adoption, 
as sons. Look at uh, verse 26. You know, and, and, and people, people gets me about the, you got people when they, they don't understand something. They want to run and go teach. You know, they want to go run and teach as a person who, you know, they're assuming that they are, they are um, um, knowledgeable, so to speak, that they know God's word of truth now. And, and, and they run out, they're a babe themselves. They deceive and go deceive others. And they'll say, well, sonship edification, that's, that's a heresy. And not understanding God's true selfless love and God desiring that a son live like his father would live, think like his father would think, and labor together with his father in what he is doing. Look at uh, verse 26 now, Romans 8, verse 26. Likewise, the spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what, what we should pray for as we ought. But the spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And, the, he, and he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And what you see here is God's word. Likewise, the living word of God also helpeth our infirmities. And that's the way it's designed to work. When we have infirmities, we turn to the word of God. We turn to what the will of God is according to godliness. When the son, when a son of a father is going through things, he ought to be able to turn to what his father told him when these times would come up. If a son is dealing with something and he's like, well, who I, I, I want to go to, I want to work somewhere. They'll oftentimes resort to back what their parent taught them, what their parents taught them according to, oh, I just got in a car accident. What do I do? Oh, I, I have a flat tire. What do I do? Oh, I'm, I'm, uh, I, I feel I'm at work and I feel sick. What do I do? And they were, they would resort back to what they've been educated in that's what this is going after with us folks for we know not what we should pray for as we ought but the spirit itself the living word of god itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered and he that searcheth the hearts what why the hearts because god knows that he what well, god desires to have is a son who's Lips speak the right things that when he searches our hearts and he does, God knows whether the will of God is in our hearts or not, whether we have the mind of Christ or not, whether we're carnal and walk as men or not. And but it's according to the will of God. The word of God is what ought to be going with ought to be dwelling richly within us, especially when we suffer as his sons. Look at verse 28 now. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Notice this says, and we know all that all things work together for good. You know, um, that's God's good. That's his good. If you are operating upon his good, when you're going through sufferings, you're going to glorify you're going to be glorified in that you're going to you're going to desire now you have another opportunity to allow his word to work effectually within you see that's the good that this is going after all things work together for his good to them and your good too to them that love god if you love him with his selflessness when per, when persecution is coming your come your way you're going to bless them you're not going to curse. You're going to bless them when persecution comes your way. When, when, when people wreck, give you evil, when they uh, say something about you or whatever the issue is, when they uh, evil is done to you, you're going to provide things honest in their sight. That's what you're. It, that's the way this is going. This what that's what this is going after because you're going to simulate God's love. That's what this means when it says, "And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, 
to them who are the called, the called. That's not according to his purpose. See, this is not talking about every saint. And I'm going to say this here, folks. You know, I've seen this guy's page, and he's a preacher, preacher, preacher from Ohio, and he he put some um, put something up up there about sonship edification. You know, and I was thinking about sending him a video, messaging him, hey brother, hey take a look at this here. You know, but then I I, I kind of watched a little bit of that video, and I said, this guy won't get it. Yeah, I'm I'm looking at his his level of understanding is 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 babe in understanding it, he, he he would take it as persecution he would take it as as me going after him and not trying to help and to edify him and, and to understanding and but the idea folks is i'm saying this to say i'm not just saying that hey, this is i'm saying this to say we might assume that the pastor teacher preacher even in right division might be well, he's here, and maybe he knows these things. But oftentimes, folks, many people do not understand the things that I am saying here. It goes right over their heads. And to them who are the called according to his purpose are only they who are the faithful. When Paul says, I speak to wise men, as to wise men, judge ye what I say, the cup of blessing which we bless not not everyone but the ones that understand to that, that are able to drink of that cup that are able to partake of each other in one body and one bread in love the ones here all things will work together for good to them that love god with his selflessness to them who are the called according to his purpose they are allowing God's word to work affection within them. And they are the ones, as he says over Romans chapter eight, when he mentions it, that's another conditional verse, folks. When he says in verse 12, when he says, therefore, brethren, we are debtors. And then it says, verse 13, for if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live for as many as are led by the Spirit of God. They are the sons of God. They are in that context. And it gave, gives you the context of who the sons are that he's going to be talking about. He's going to be talking about them who are led by the living word of God, led by his father's word, by his father's will, his father's way, and his father's life. They are the sons of God in that context. And in the context of here, what this says, the them who are the called according to his purpose them that love god they are the faithful the apostle paul was on this list here titus the apostle was on this list here the, many saints were but demas he forsake he forsook uh, uh, uh the ministry and went after this evil world he just didn't love god enough he, he he was justified in Christ. He, he's still in Christ. Look at uh, verse 29 now. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be, to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. But notice what this says here. For whom, for whom, and that's them who are the called according to his purpose, is what this is all saying. And see, folks, I, some people will say, wait a minute, so you're saying verses 29 and 30 are not talking about every saint? Well, let's just, let's just see. For whom, verse 29, he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. This is many brethren God foreknew and predestinated that he would have these faithful saints and sons, remember the context we're in, we're in the adoption of sons here, that they would be conformed to the image of his son, that the Lord might be the firstborn among many brethren, many faithful brethren, folks. 
we can be faithful. We can be brothers and sisters with the Lord. Look, look at verse 30. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. Whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. Look at verse uh, 31 now. I don't know why I separated this here. Verse 31. What shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Uh, he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him? How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Now, spend a lot of time on that there. Very needful. But again, as this is saying in verses 26 on down, it's talking to them who are allowing the will of God to work effectually within them who are allowing God's word to work effectually within them. Ones that desire to be, to, to cry of a father, to know him as the God of all comfort. But you notice what this says here, when it says, um, um, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. That's what it's about, folks. It's about his purpose, the good of God. God's selfless love. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. That's not talking about every saint, folks. That's not talking about, in that verse and context, it's not talking about every saint. Them who are the called according to his purpose is his faithful, faithful son, that's allowing love, let love be without the stimulation. Remember what it says, to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. They know his good. They understand selfless love. They're operating upon it. And as he said, when he says, for whom he did, for whom he did um, um, foreknow, uh, he also did predestinate. God predestinated, he foreknew and predestinated that he that they might be conformed to the image of his son and, and, and that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. You think, it's just, you think it was God's foreknown and, and predestination of thinking that the Lord would be firstborn among many babes in Christ? firstborn among me. And I'm not saying he despises them or that's not what I'm saying at all, but that's not his desire for you as a saint in Christ, that you only just be justified, but that you be able, that you be walking with the renewed spiritual mind, having the mind of Christ. If you have the mind of Christ and you're putting on the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and you're walking in him, wouldn't that be conformed to the image of his son? Wouldn't that be conformed to the image of, yes, of course it would be. And they are the ones who Christ desired to be the firstborn among many brethren. And when that says firstborn among many brethren, as sons, as faithful sons, it be, what did it just say? To be conformed to the image of his son. If we're conformed to the image of his son, would not you have the mind of Christ? Would not you be renewed with the spiritual mind? Would not you be proven what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God? Sure you would be. Because you'd be in his likeness. You'd be doing things his way. You'd be fever, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Not slothful in business. But folks, this is what this goes after. This goes after understanding the selfless love of God, self, the will of God, and let love be without dissimulation. If you let love be without dissimulation and allow it to simulate his love, all these things are going to come, come your way. And what I mean, I'm, when you understand his selflessness and not just, yeah, that's right, he did die for me. God didn't have to send his only begotten son. And not only, not only did he not spare him, he delivered him up for me. 
Thank you. That, that's not what it's all about. Now you operating, and, and that's why it says, uh, in Romans chapter six, it gives us the education there of all those things, all those things mentioned there. It, it, it's just one after another, after another in Romans chapter six, it, it, know ye not that so many of us, of us were baptized into Christ's death, were baptized, I mean, baptized into Christ, were baptized into death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism. That like as Christ were raised from the dead, even so we also, all them, all that, and, and that's just the beginning of, look at him, now look at you. You, we just seen, according as God hath, that's the likeness, folks, that you be walking in the selfless love of God and the selfless love of Christ, knowing they're good, cleaving to that which is good, abhorring that which is evil. And when you see this, folks, you're going to abhor this world standards and, and things. When you see certain traditions of men come up, all these different days, and, and we're, we're in, I'm in February now, February, wow, 3rd, February 3rd right now, as I'm, as I'm bringing this forth, Valentine's Day is coming up. That's your tradition of men. When I, every time that comes around, that's the evil of this world, folks. And not just only that day, but all the others. And I'm not saying I'm only picking on that day or anything like that, but that's the tradition of men. That's their way of good. That's their way of love. It, it, wait, how, how can you go and talk against that? Memorial Day, Veterans Day, Christmas, Easter, New Year's, our birthdays, our anniversaries. Past, even pastor anniversaries. Yeah, I said it, even pastor anniversaries. All that, folks, is foolishness. It's the tradition of, of men. And guess what? Your father looks upon it as the evil, whether you know it or think it or not. What are those words, what are those days gonna do for you in heavenly places? How does that bring forth any honor and glory unto your father? Either one of those days, Easter, Christmas. God desires that you that you look at each day, each time, your time unto your Father as holy. Every day, not just one day, two day, three days. Oh no, we worship. We worship uh, Kwanzaa. We have a a seven day time, period of time, whatever, whatever that. It, it, it's all tradition of man. It's evil. It's the evil of this world. Cleaving unto that which is good, you know, every day. Doesn't matter. Today, as I'm doing this now, it's 1 p.m. It doesn't make I, I didn't start, I didn't choose a certain day that I had to do it. I don't I don't I don't put things out because of well, this time or that time. It's based upon everyday folks ought to be walking with the renewed spiritual mind, being a living sacrifice, not only two, three days a, a, a year or a month every single day that's the good that's cleaving to that which is good selfless love will know when you let love be you're gonna let all those things in this world go you're gonna be a living sacrifice you don't have to go oh, well you know we gotta go do this and yeah you know it's so-and-so's birthday and you know birthday 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 you know uh uh, uh uh valentine every day ought to be valentine's and i'll tell you like this if we walked with as every day is a Memorial Day, a Veterans Day, a, a birthday, a, a anniversary, um, wedding anniversary, uh, every other Valentine's Day, when the, someone only did those things on that one day, you, you'd be like, where's the brotherly love? Where's the honor? Where's the preferring? Where's the kindly, affectionate? Where's that type of love at? You, you're only going to give that to me one time a year? People, you know what I mean? So only show love to a veteran one time a year. A fallen veteran only on Memorial Day. Uh, give praise to someone. Show them love because it's their birthday. Or on Christmas, you give them presents. Let your kids go and do something one time a day, Halloween. All those things, folks, that's a tradition of men. That's evil. 
It's the evil of this world. But let's move on. Come over to uh, Romans 8. Uh, come down to verse 33 now. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? Now, now you see who it's going after, folks. Is this talking about every saint? What I just made mention, when I said, and someone's, wait a minute, you're, and you know, I say that because when I mentioned about the guy, the preacher from Ohio, that, and I'm not, and when I say that, I'm not talking about any, when I say that guy, a guy from Ohio, I, I, maybe I'll be more specific, Columbus, Ohio, I'll do it that way. But what I made mention about the preacher from Ohio, made mention about the sonship thing, the idea is that when you, when you know, some some would say that what goes after what, what what is speaking, what I'm speaking after is a heresy when I say things like it. This is not talking about all saints. It's only talking about the faithful or should I say the elect? Because as you see, verse 33, who shall lay anything to the charge of God's e Elect. Right after he made mention about about them who love God to them who are the called according to his purpose, for whom he did foreknow, all for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be for, the firstborn among many brethren. And then he goes down and says, "Moreover, whom he did call predestinate them, he also called whom he called them." Also, he justified whom he justified them who also he glorified. And then when you get down here to verse 33, who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It, why would you be condemned? Why would someone be laying something to your charge? Charge. You're only just justified in Christ. This is talking about every saint. No, it's <laughs> If, if this was just talking to every saint, folks, you're not going to have people laying anything to your charge. Why? Because you're justified unto eternal life? Why? Because you're saved, you're, you're going to your local assembly? Who's going to, who's going to, why would someone condemn you? Why would someone bring forth condemnation unto you? And, and look at verse 34 again. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather that is risen again, who is even as the right at the right hand of God, who maketh intercession for us. And some would say, see, here's the justification. He died for us. We're saved. And they're No, this is talking about you're going to need the in intercession of the word of God. When the, you know to turn to his word, you know to turn to his word and all things will work together for your for the good to them that love God, to them, the elect who are the called according to his purpose, the purpose of why he foreknew you, why he. And I don't mean he foreknew you as as, as predestination, folks. I'm saying he foreknew that there would be sons and daughters, that there would be sons and daughters that would be the elect. The ones that would be conformed to the image of his son. Look at verse uh, 35. Who shall separate us from the, from the love of Christ? It, I'm going to just, let me just state this here. This is only talking, when he's, <laughs> this is talking to the faithful, to the elect folks. And if you're operating upon his selfless love, if you're letting love be without dissimulation, Okay, nothing shall separate you from the love of Christ. You know why? Because you're going to be operating upon his selfless love and all things will work together for good to them that love him, love God, operating upon his selfless love. And when that happens, who shall separate you from the love of Christ? You, you ought to be able to say nothing. I'm not going to lie. Did Paul allow any of these things to separate him from the love of Christ? No, he didn't. When Paul was, when Paul was persecuted, did he curse? Paul knew how to respond when he was persecuted. He was well equipped in understanding how to do it. Bless them which persecute you, bless and curse not. 
when tribulation comes our, come your way, folks, distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril of sword, what are you going to say? As it, verse 36, this is what you ought to say. As it is written, Lord, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Notice it's we and we, because you're thinking and you're saying, this ought to be your saying. We ought to have a saying also, a saying. We ought to allow this to dwell richly within us when things come up in our life. Things come up, when tribulation come up in your life, for thy sake, Lord, we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. With distress, when you get stressed out to the nth degree, for thy sake, we are killed all the, not for my sake, not always about me. I'm a living sacrifice. I, I'm, I'm a living sacrifice. It's not always about me. I'm, I'm proving what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. I'm, I pre, I'm presenting my body as a living sacrifice. Why would distress trouble me? Notice the next one. Or persecution. Bless them that persecute you. Bless and curse not. If your persecution is, op, is, is befalling you, it, wouldn't you now... Remember, if you operate upon the love of Christ, when persecution comes your way, and it will if you're operating, if you're the elect, when it comes your way, guess what? You're going to bless and curse not. When you when when, when famine comes your way, or you, you're going to be patient, as it says, patient in tribulation, rejoicing in hope, uh, nakedness or peril. And that nakedness, and that naked nakedness is without. That that means not not just clothes, not just clothes, folks, but without without. Nakedness could even be without a home, dwelling place, but or peril, or sword, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted, accounted. Yeah, that word count. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter for his sake. Look at verse 37 now. Nay, in all these things, we are more, not just conquerors, because you're going to be proving what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. You're going to be abounding in love. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him, through him that loved us. Why does it say through him? Hmm. Because that's his selfless love. And his selfless love that loved us is not. And when people see this, that they only see, yes, he loved us on the cross when he shed his blood for us. And that's all they see. And then they, and then they say, yeah, well, we got to, you know, it's, it's, it's his time. It was their time to go. And he loved you so much. He called you home. It's not what this is going after. This is going after when you are the elect. And you're preaching his word. You, you are boring that which is evil, cleaving to that which is good. You're going to see those persecutions and tribulations and distresses and, and all those things, peril and swore, even sword, folks. You're going to see it. Look at verse 38. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And you know, notice both loves here. The love of Christ is up there in verse 35. Love of God is here in verse 39. And that's because those things written on the list in verse 35, they all pertain to the things that Christ suffered and the things that we also will suffer if you are the elect. If you, the persecution this talks about, again, is not someone throwing a rock through your window. It's not someone cutting you off in traffic. That's crime. This persecution is persecution for Christ's sake. The stress is for Christ's sake. All these things here. That's what this is going after. And you know, when I, again, when I, as I said before, when I mentioned the, the guy from, the preacher from Ohio, Columbus, Ohio there, it, the, the idea is that, you know, when you see those things, it, it, it does cause, it, it's just disheartening. 
it's this it's disheartening that you got preachers teaching other people to 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 ignore the selfless love of God and the selfless love of Christ. They'll say, "No, I'm not. No, I'm not doing that, brother. I'm teaching them to love Christ." But when you're saying when you when people when, when you take them to a verse that explains to you about your adoption, and folks, I know what I'm what, what's being taught here, what's being said. It it might go over the head of many. But when 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 I say for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And about to them who are the called according to to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. When I say that not all saints, that that's not talking about every single saint, people get offended by that and assume what is being said is a heresy. But on the flip side, you know what they're doing? They are keeping people as babes. They're, they're not showing forth the selfless love of God and the selfless love of Christ to them who are the called according to his purpose. The, the elect, the elect of God, it, they're not bringing forth this here. When they, when they keep people in that state to say, oh no, that's just talking about every saint. And guess what? It doesn't make a difference if you have a renewed spiritual mind in their sight. As long as you go to their local assembly, as long as you tune in and, and, and you give them views and likes, it doesn't make a difference. They don't care if you have a spiritual renewed mind. They don't care if you're you are a living if you if you understand what it means to be a living sacrifice. And they'll say, "What do you mean?" They don't care. Of course they care. Then they'll teach it, but the idea they don't see it, folks. They don't see the selfless love. They don't see the selfless love of Christ and love of God. They don't see that. They have a limited understanding in assuming what's being shown about your adoption just pertains to every single saint. That this is not conditional here. That this is only going after only just them in Christ. So it doesn't make... So when Paul made mention over there in 1 Corinthians chapter, chapter 2, about them being babes. And in chapter three, your carnal and walk as men. I couldn't feed you with with, with, with uh, meat, spiritual meat. I couldn't even feed you with spiritual milk. You're not able, neither yet now are you. Again, what difference do it make? Those that Paul, those that call Paul fools and them who Paul called fools over in Galatians. It just doesn't matter, right? What's the difference? They're all the same. Why did why did Paul, as he said, why do we stand in judgment? Why do we? <laughs> it does make a difference, folks, whether you can bring forth fruit unto holiness or fruit unto death. It does make a difference. You being glorified together and we can be glorified together. And if children, the heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with, with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together and the idea of suffering together with him is you allowing his word to work affection within you as you suffer and the, the stuff i'm the stuff that is that that i just pointed out here folks as i said this will go right over the heads of them they uh, hopefully they, they they could see it and they could I, again a lot of times if it's coming from someone else Maybe people will be more receptive onto it. But coming from someone who gets few views here, few views there, what can be known by them? But let's just move on. Come over to uh come over to Ephesians now. Look at Ephesians chapter three. Ephesians three, look at verse thir uh, 17. Whoa. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth, the length, and the depth, and the height, to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. You notice that selfless love right there, folks? You being rooted and grounded in his selfless love, knowing that. God's love desires to simulate, be simulated. And he desires the elect, 
and the faithful simulate his love. And I hate to, well, and I'll just say it on Christ's behalf. I'll just say it like that on Christ's behalf. They, we being conformed to the image of his son as brothers and sisters with the Lord, we too would be ones. Remember folks, put ye on the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Remember, have the mind of Christ. Walk in him. Be led by the, all these things to know the love of Christ with passage knowledge that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now come down to 1 Corinthians. Now I talked about that. Let's go to it. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And I'm not talking about the babes or the carnal situation there, but I'm talking about the love of Christ. Selfless love. Look at verse 9. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither it have entered into the heart of man. Notice the heart of man. The things which God hath prepared for them that love him. You, you notice that? See, the heart of man has things in them, but they are the world's thinking, the world's good, the world's love, the world's life, and the world's tradition. So man's heart is full already. He doesn't understand things like suffering, being persecuted. He doesn't understand what a living sacrifice is. He can't, that can't enter into his heart. But them that love him with his selfless love, love they can see it. They know what things, they know the things of God are spiritual things. They know the things of God are not house, car, uh good spouse on your arm, um, bank account. That's not the things of God. All that is in the world. The lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of this world. Look at um, verse 10. But God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. If you look at this the way this is laid out here, but God hath revealed them unto us by his living word. For the living word of God searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. That's the only way you're going to, you, you're able to search it, folks. That's the only way you're able to search it is by his will, his way, and his life, the word. Look at verse 11. For what man knoweth the things of man? Notice the things of man save the spirit of man which is in him. That's man's things. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Uh, now we have received. See, that's the word we have received. Not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. But you notice all those things. You had good things. And you had evil things. You had the things of man. Which man assumes that the thing, he can't discern the things of God. He can't discern the good of God. These things are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them. Renewed, renewed spiritual mind? What's that? Sure, I have a renewed spiritual mind is what they'll say. Yeah, my, you know, we, uh, I, I, I went to um, uh, uh, Bible study. I went to Bible study with my mom, my mother. And, and, and I know we we read the story of Daniel and, and, and the lion. We learned the story of Solomon and we learned all those things. That's not what, that's the evil concerning. That's man's tradition. That's man's vain worship. That's what that is. And, and just all those things, neither can he know them. They're spiritually discerned. Hey, the ma natural man looks at all these things here, being the faithful, being the elect, as foolishness. He views that as foolishness unto him because neither can he know him. He can't perceive it. He can only perceive what this world has and what this world says is religion, what this world says is tradition. He, 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 he embraces it. But let's move on. Come over to uh come over to Colossians chapter two now. Colossians chapter two, look at verse seven. Colossians two, verse seven. Rooted and built up in him, established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. And folks, I'm just going to run right through this because we're we're, we're already way over time here. Um, look at verse 12. Look at verse 12 now. 
put on therefore as the elect, as the what? The elect of God, holy, beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering, forbearing one another, forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so do ye. Notice the elect of God. Why does he have to tell a justified saint to put on the elect of God? Wait a minute. You mean there's two different, you mean there's two, th th there's two saints? Well, yes, it is. You have a vessel of honor and vessel of dishonor. You have saints that are vessels of dishonor. They're still in Christ. They're still in the household of God is what that's, what Timothy tells you. They're still of the house of God, but they're vessels of dishonor. Paul's desiring you put on therefore the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And you don't think it's your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? That's why he says here in verse 13, if any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so do ye. You see that likeness? You're told to put on someone and as the elect of God. Look at verse 14, above all these things put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness, being that perfect son. And yes, we can be perfect. We can be perfect in the sight of God. Yes, you can be. And you can also be, you can bring forth fruit unto holiness. You can walk in condemnation. You can be delivered over to Satan, all those words. But you can be perfect. You can be elect. Look at verse 15, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts to the which ye are also called in one body and be ye thankful. If you're letting the peace of God rule, who, who are you giving your heart unto? You're a living sacrifice. Look at verse 16, let the word of Christ dwell richly, dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching, admonishing another in psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord, not to to to, to the world or, or just any and every everybody else. But again, folks, it, it, it's not, and I hate to even use the word, it's not hard. When we see what God's word says here, God's word making mention, I beseech you, therefore, by brethren, by the mercies of God, you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. This goes after you being what God desires you to be as a faithful, as the elect, knowing what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Abhorring that which is evil, cleaving to that which is good. And folks, letting love be without dissimulation is letting love be without simulating. Don't allow your love to be not simulating God's love or Christ's love. When tribulation comes our way. We're to do. That's why it says uh, um, in, in Romans 8. We'll, you know what? We're going to turn back there in a little bit. At time, we're just going to I'm just going to let time be. And I'm, we're just going to go go over there because I was going to, let's just go over there and we'll get to it there. Come over to Romans 8 now. Back to Romans 8. And I just want to, let's just, let's just get to it. Look at Romans 8 verse 12. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. And this explains to you here who you ought to be a debtor to. Who are you going to give your heart unto? Who, who are you going to allow to rule in your heart? You, it ought to be God. And, and, and the peace of God can rule there. It, the, the, the comfort of God can rule there. The word of God can rule there. We are debtors unto the Father, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. You ought to be a debtor to the word, to, to him, to his will. Look at verse 13. For if ye live after the flesh... Ye shall die. But if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. This is telling you this is conditional, folks. You could live after your flesh. And if you do, what's going to happen? You're going to functionally die. But if, if you through the spirit, the living word of God, do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall functionally live unto him. You're going to bring forth fruit unto holiness. 
Look at verse 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. That's not talking about every saint. And, you know, for those that say, and I've heard people teach that, you no, know, this is talking about all saints. That's talking about God's spirit in us. That's not what that's saying. That That's that, that's that's not what that's saying at all. And if I say to any preacher that says this, and if I say, okay, you take yourself, preacher, you take yourself, you know some Bible verses, right? Sure. Why wouldn't you go out there and kill and steal? They'll say, because that's not who I am in Christ. And you're, if you're led by the word, and then I say, if we go out knocking on doors and we get someone justified today unto eternal life, are they led by the spirit of God? Do they know where to turn or discern what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God? They're, they're going to agree that, no, they, they wouldn't. For as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God because they know what their father, they know what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. They know they can discern it. Look at uh, verse 15 now. For as, for we for ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but we have ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. And we have received the living word of adoption, folks. It's right in front of us. Verse 16, the spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And it does. The living word of God itself does bear witness with our inner man that we are we are in Christ. We are justified unto eternal life. The children of God and it is, is going after that we are saved in him. But look at verse 17. Um, yeah, verse 17. And if children, and we are, then heirs and or then heirs, heirs of God. We are. We are his, we are of his house. We're of the same household as Ephesians chapter two talks about. We are in Christ. Notice the next part, and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. For those that are preaching that this is going after all saints, that's a heresy. Because this is not talking about every single saint is going to suffer together with him. If so be that we is if so be we suffer with him, that we may be glorified together. Now look at Romans 12. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think more highly of himself than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. And that's, as it says there, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. Again, that likeness is what you see there. You see that likeness. You see that uh, likeness of being that the elect, being ones that are operating upon his selfless love, ones that are going to understand the selfless love of God, understanding what is the good and the good is going to go after the selfless love of Christ. It's not going to go after the world. God's God's knowing, discerning what is God's evil. You'll know that it's all these things of this world here. That's the evil of God. But you'll know that only the faithful, the faithful in Christ, the elect, they are the sons of God. In that context, they are ones, when you become a living sacrifice, when you are a living sacrifice, you're going to walk with the renewed spiritual mind. You're going to put on, therefore, you're going to put on the mind. You're going to bring forth fruit unto holiness, not fruit unto death. You're going to be glorified together. If so be that we be glor uh, if you suffer with him, glorified together. That's not this. That's not some Rod Jonesism or Keith Bladesism or any any other thing. That's what's in God's word of truth. Being the elect of God, being one that's conformed to the image of His Son. And again, 
teaching them, edifying members of the body in understanding this. Folks, it, 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 when I see people teaching bad doctrine, I, 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 I suffer. I, I suffer. I, I want to run right off. You know, you got people teaching doctrine today about the about that uh, the soul sleep and all this other stuff. I I see that stuff, and I and I know it's a time that I have to teach. I, I want to run out and teach it right now, but I'm going to be doing a a in depth study, going over the consciousness of man, going or the the idea when we leave this earth, what happened? There is consciousness. There there is life. There's something called eternal life. And all those things, but it's always babes running right out there, teaching. Don't understand God's word of truth, but they're running out and teaching. Then they get tripped up. They they deceive and deceive again. Then they get they get so deep that they don't want to walk it back now, and and, and all that stuff, you know. And it's, but again, folks, that's that all. But I have to understand the patience and and understand there's a time. And, and, and me saying what I'm saying, it's not lashing out at anyone. It, 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 it's trying to warn them against them who teach that stuff. Because you people listen to that, and first thing happens is they listen to that, and they stay, they, they remain babe in understanding. Someone comes right in there, and they give them some, some doctrine like soul sleep, or, 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 well, there's no, why would a loving God torment everyone? Why would a normal, loving God send someone to lake of fire and all that stuff? And they'll fall for that. They'll fall for it because they themselves are babes and they'll teach it to other babes and then other babes will teach it. And then it's easier to accept that than it is to accept this, to be a living sacrifice, to look at this world's things and stop worrying about things like flat earth and, 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 and demonic possession and all these other things that are foolishness with with your father that's the tradition of this world that did those things are foolishness and to be worrying about that we, we could be edified bring it forth fruit unto holiness understanding these things folks it, 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 this this is vital to understand that's not your god's love god can care less if you were about all those things you know but what we're gonna do we get ready to close and um, I want to thank everyone for tuning in. Till next time, thank you.